I got some bad chips and I wanted to share with you guys how to recognize when you have bad chips. And I'm doing this because I'm really irritated with all of, with how hard it is to get good chips. If you buy your chips from somebody that uses chips, so somebody that does micro soldering, then they're going to be aware of when they get bad chips and not pass them on to you. That's my best piece of advice for how to figure out whether or not you have bad chips. I see this going around a lot where people are asked, is it me, is it my chips? In general, if you bought your chips from somebody that does micro soldering. That means somebody like us or somebody like Jason Gann at Micro Soldering Supply, somebody like Lewis, somebody that uses those chips in their line of work, they're gonna be using the same stuff as you. They're gonna be the ones that figure out if there's a bad batch. So let me show you what it looks like for us when we get bad chips from China so that you can at least do that evaluation on your own. Always be looking at chips before you put them on the board. If you are buying them from somebody that is just a warehouse that doesn't do micro soldering themselves, then it can be really difficult because you become the quality control department. And they're only gonna know they have bad chips if you tell them. So let me share with you a couple of examples. Here's one. So I, I came in today just to look at some new chips that we had ordered that I'm uh, putting up for sale on iPad Rehab Supply on store.ipadrehab.com. And one of them is some new tigresses. So I ordered some tigress chips and you can see that they come sealed. And I was very specific always with my suppliers in China must be new, reballed, not okay, not used, must be new, you know, and, and so I, I did get new chips this time, yay. So these are some Tigris chips. And I have been trolled by this before. So this is the second time that this has happened to me from two different suppliers. So let's take a look here at an iPhone um, six board and here's Tigris. And you can look at the number on Tigris. So here's Tigris and if you look kind of at the, the the details, let's see if we can get that in focus. It says TI, Texas Instrument, and then it has a number, and then it says SN2400BO. So the SN2400. Now sometimes that actual number doesn't matter. Sometimes a certain chip can is sort of like chocolate and vanilla can swap. So there's a little bit of, of industry experience and you have to do experiments to know, can I swap this for a similar match? Does it work between two different devices? I don't know. You have to experiment around. So I am ordering Tigris chips and let me show you what I got labeled on the packages. So here's some chips that I've got 60 of these guys and it says SN2400BO. Great. And these are new. So how do I know that they're new? I'm going to take one out of the strip. So I've got my strip here. Let's peel. This is that same brand new strip. Let's peel one out so you guys can see. I took out a few to try to make my thumbnail earlier. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look to see are they new or not. Now, it's not necessarily a deal breaker if they're not new. I prefer new chips. Ah, I don't know how to turn that off. What is that? Mm, that's gonna be hard to turn off. Let me go see if I can turn it off. Some mess up your video or something like that. All right. Um, I think that's off. All right. So how do I know that these chips are new? What's up with that? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at them. Now, new new is preferred but not every chip is available new and that's what's the problem with these these are not they're they're difficult to find new so this one in particular you got to really watch out for so let's look to see does it look kind of in appearance like this has been pulled off a board is it scuffed on the top does it have tweezer marks and the answer is no so i'm going to say this chip does look like it's new now the balls on the other side are really going to be what what i can tell are they even do they look like they are lead free, meaning they are standard factory solder and they have that dull gray. They're not shiny and these do. So this looks like a brand new chip. I don't see any evidence, any residue, any precipitate from a reballing process. This is a new chip. Yay, new tigresses. Finally, I've been looking for new tigresses. I've been having to use some reballed tigresses that I verified work, but I prefer them to be new. So let's see. Let's just do one final check and let's look at that number. Now this number doesn't say 
SN. It says PN. SN2400 is what we're looking for. That's what we ordered. And that is what was written on the sticker. And guess what? These are not it. These are the wrong chip. PN2400. Man, it looks so similar. It's so difficult to pick up on that minor difference. You know, who is, who is even going to notice that? PN versus SN? That's really, really hard to notice. Well, guess what? If you swap in a PN Tigris for an SN, it will not work. Guess how I know this? Because I tried it, because I didn't recognize the first time that I ordered Tigris's new and they looked new and I said, okay, and I stuck some in and I'm like, why are these jobs not working? Then I start to question the chips, then I go back and that's when I see this stuff. So now PN versus SN is on my radar screen and every time I get new Tigresses, I'm gonna check for it. And this, no matter how crystal clear you are, nobody really knows what they're selling unless they're using the chips. So guys in China don't know what, what it is. They're just, says, 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 pack it, put it in a box. They don't know. People in the US, they don't know unless they're using the chips. Now here's why this is also super irritating because I just had to go discontinue our own set of everyday IC TriStar, the best, biggest, number one IC that you're gonna be replacing. I had to just uh, totally trash about 500 of them and I'll show you why. And that's why I'm doing this video to let you guys know that if you have a supplier that is using the chips, then you're using what they're using. If you have a problem, it's you, not the chip. If you are buying chips from somebody that doesn't microsolder, solder, then you have no idea. It could very well be the chip because it's really hard to know what you're getting. Nobody knows what they're selling. Here's a, here's a strip of TriStar. So this is one of a batch of about 500 TriStars and i put a sticker so i'll remember them these are the bad panda ones so these ones are not good so i bought these same thing brand new from a trusted supplier that i've used many times who i can talk to who i think knows what's going on and i open up what they believe is brand new tristars because i'm crystal clear about that and let's take a look all right so far so good it looks like it's you know new in this sort of wrapper oh wait a minute let's look at the next one down Look at that one. Hmm. Look at that one in particular. Look at this chip. Look at this chip. Let's start at the top. Uh, that is not, that is not normal. That is not new. Your chip, when you first take it out of the package, should not look like a toddler has been gnawing on it. It is not, it should not have dings in it. It should not have crunch marks from somebody's tweezers you know a kindergartner took this off with a pair of chopsticks this is not okay and then let's look at the, bo the bottom side and here when we really examine the balls this is definitely a reballed chip right we can see the debris we can see little bits and specks and inconsistencies this is a reballed chip and to even make it worse, I think it's been reballed with lead-free solder so that it wouldn't, even if you did reball it, maybe you could make an argument. It'd be nice to get some chips like Audio IC that are reballed with leaded so they go on nice and easy, but not TriStar. This guy has been reballed with lead-free. Why is this bad? Let's think. Where did this TriStar come from? It came from somebody's probably dead iPhone 7 that had baseband disease and they harvested it from a dead iPhone 7. What is the likelihood that this TriStar itself is, is okay? It's like using somebody else's used motor oil to do your oil change. TriStar is the number one chip. It gets electrically damaged. So while we could harvest an audio IC or a touch chip and reuse it and expect the chip to be okay, not TriStar, of all the chips to never harvest ding tristar never ever 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 never ever ever use a used tristar for any reason now these are the same thing where this is this is from a strip let's look at the the next one was that a one-time deal or not you know let's look at this one and now we're kind of suspicious so now when we kind of like flash that around a little bit on this view it looks okay 
you know, but here we can kind of see a little bit of a dullness or a dirtiness. And now look on the bottom of that. Can you, can you notice all these flecks and dirt? Look at that. It looks like somebody blew their nose with this TriStar. It looks like it was reballed from the inside of a vacuum cleaner bag in China. You know, like somebody swept up a bunch of fallen down TriStars that they're just pitching over their shoulders into a giant dustpan and then dumped it on somebody's desk. You reball these. Nice to sell, right? This is total crap. Now, what's worse is that if you don't notice this and you put this in a device, which we did as an experiment when I first got this strip and I was furious, guess what? The, not only do these TriStars look terrible and are horrible to even think of using, if you actually do use it, two in a row were actually damaged electrically inside. So terrible, terrible, awful bad chips. And that is a real shame. So those were the TriStars that I had bought to sell to people. And they come so pretty. You know, they come in these nice little sealed packages and they look brand new. And they're they're not like, you know, thrown in some sort of a of a Ziploc bag and just kind of, you know, chucked in a bin. No, they, they look professional in the static bags, but they are terrible chips. They suck and you, you shouldn't be using them. So I just wanted to put that out there that uh, for you guys to, to, you know, how do you know what, whether or not your, your chips are bad or not? You know, it's, it's really tough. Some chips, they are not available new and you have to use reballs. So just the fact that something is reballed isn't necessarily a deal breaker. So something that's reballed is okay. Uh, sometimes some things that are reballed are actually a good value because they are pretty good chips if the person is doing the reball well. So look at the chips with your eyes. Check to see if it's a good reball. Consider re-reballing them yourself if it looks questionable. And then number two is you're going to have to uh, trust your supplier. So if you are buying chips from somebody that doesn't do micro soldering, you really don't have a good way to know, especially if you look at the chip, you have no way to know um, if it's a mismatch. So you can look at those numbers. You're going to have to do that yourself. You can look at if it's reball and it doesn't work, you know, then you're going to have to do that job three or four times. It's really, really tough. Or you can just buy chips from people like Mark Schaefer or me or Jason Gann or Lewis Rossman or anybody else that's using the chips. Hey, buddy, can I can I buy a chip from you? Use it for, you know, if you buy chips from somebody else that uses those chips, you're all working out of the same batch. And the moment that we find out that we've been sold crappy chips from our trusted suppliers that that think they're selling the good stuff, then we're going to immediately pull them and we're gonna you know, put them offline until, until we can replace that. All right, so I am, let's see, uh, let's, I'm gonna look at chat real quick and then I've gotta rush off to the airport to get to the uh, conference in Vegas for CPR. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna see, looks new, Google is your friend, it looks fake. 500, that sucks. Yep, remove with vice grip pliers. What about PMIC? I usually find them like this. Some chips cannot be found new. Yes, some chips cannot be found new. So especially your iPad PMICs, those are gonna be expensive chips. Same thing for iPhone 7 SD RAM. You know, we're, we're having to pay, you know, 30 bucks a chip and sometimes they are warped and that's really tough. Not every chip is available. Some are not available at all and others are really only available from somebody else uh, taking them, harvesting them and reballing them from an iCloud block board. Those are going to be the more expensive chips. Let's see. Um, never had a single problem with these chips, but I'll check the numbers with the chips now. Yes. Um, let's see. I've encountered this stuff on TriStar, but in my case, the ICs look all okay. Some work and some don't. Well, if they look brand new, then it's you know brand new if it's the right chip then you're going to be okay so if you're getting a brand new chip that you're sure is not reballed and it's the same chip meaning the numbers match then it's you right because the manufacturers i haven't seen at least i haven't seen manufacturers making batches of brand new legitimate bona fide tristar chips that are bad what you get into trouble with are new ones like this tigris it's not the right chip. It's a mismatch. So it's new, but it's wrong. 
It's a mismatch. Sold as the standard Tigris chip, but it's not. So that's how you get in trouble with new chips. Reballed chips can be great, but reballing is really, really variable. We've, we've gotten chips before that have had a resistor smashed in the ball. So always be flipping them over and looking at the bottom of the chips. Just because it's a reball doesn't mean that it's bad if it's a difficult to source chip. But reballs is a variable. So if it's available new, get new. Reball it yourself. But taking in reballed chips, they're harvested from a board. You don't know why that board died. You don't know if that chip is bad or not. How do I identify a crack? Sometimes I can hardly identify it's a deep scratch or a crack. That's a really good question. Um, you can put alcohol on it and kind of shine it around a, a, you know, a little bit. And then it's going to really be a functional test. So if it's all sort of how did it come to be this way, if your phone was dropped, if the history is dropped, if it's not water damage, if that spot is getting hot, then it's most likely to be a crack. NAND gets cracked. PMIC gets cracked. Big chips get cracked. Little chips don't get cracked unless it's tweezer damage, pry damage. Somebody's been in there working. If, somebody's, if it's a prior repair attempt, then you can look for little, little cracks. Do you know the code for TriStar? Yes, the code for TriStar, you can, you know, this is something that I, that I kind of uh, hope that everybody knows by now. Uh, let's kind of do this little, little aside. Um, I'll take you to store.ipadrehab.com just to look at TriStar for a second. Let's see if we can do uh, display, capture, and, you know, if we look over here at everyday ICs, we don't list a ton of chips, and we're, we, I have a set here that I'm going to list all of the Hydra and uh, the iPhone 8, 10 chips, Tigris 2, and the ones that you actually need. So we're going to be selling the everyday ICs, Chestnut, Tigris, TriStar, those guys, backlight driver, backlight kits, things like that. Um, so if you look at here, we call this TriStar the everyday TriStar chip. And you can look at its number, it's 610A3B. So 610A3B is the TriStar that you're looking for. And that's how we describe it. This chip is the TriStar that you're looking for almost all the time because this guy can swap for and is backwards compatible to all of these other TriStars, all these guys. Just use this guy. So you don't need to stock individual flavors of TriStar when they're all, all the 1610 TriStars can use this chip. How do you find that out? Because you, you get your chip from somebody that sells chips. So I'm telling you here in my description, so is Jason Gann and hopefully so is Lewis. Um, and that's, that's sort of my, my tip. If you are buying your, your, uh, if you're buying chips from somebody that doesn't use them, how are they possibly going to know whether or not you can swap this TriStar for another one? They're not. They're not doing those experiments. They don't work in that market. Nothing wrong with that. Don't buy screens from me. I don't know enough about them to sell. I wouldn't be able to evaluate them. I don't know. I don't have any idea what the difference is between, you know, this kind of LCD and that kind of backlight. No clue on that. Don't buy screens from Jessa, that's for sure. All right. I got to I got to hit the road here. Let's see. Um TriStar Holiday Never had a problem with chips from China. What? Jester is one supplier I can think of that's good. No, they're not. I mean, with every, every single, I, I'll say this, every single supplier of chips on AliExpress that anybody can find, every single one of them is guilty of selling wrong chips, reball described as new, or just straight up mismatches. There's no like trusted supplier in China. And, and there's a huge difficulty of information because we call chips differently, like chestnut, backlight driver. They don't say that. They don't have a word in Chinese that means chestnut. They call chips by the board designation. And as you know, the board designation is different between different boards. So you know what's U2301 is U510 in another board. That gets to be really, really confusing. So in China, when you're talking with people in China, they think they know what they're selling a lot of the time, but you're talking to a salesperson. That person doesn't microsolder. They don't really know. And they're getting these chips from a whole bunch of different sources. So you can get lucky. What you're doing is saying, hey guy, it's kind of like a, China is like a giant Walmart, you know, where you're just saying, hey, person who's getting ready to go into Walmart, I want you to get me some apples, I want you to get me some bananas, I want you to get me some TriStar. They're gonna just go into the market and they're gonna, they're gonna get whatever they can get 
by talking to somebody, hey, is this a good try store? Yeah, it's totally great. That's what they're gonna get. They're gonna pass that on to you. You don't have any idea what, whether or not that's good. Sometimes, sometimes it's good. Um, great, so you can get great chips off of AliExpress and that's the most affordable way to get chips for sure. But just know that it's a total gamble, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and when you get them, if you're having problems, look closely at them. Just put your eyes on all of these chips. And my advice is to buy chips from somebody that uses those same chips. That's all for today. And now I'm gonna throw all these chips away and I don't have to rant on this topic anymore.